and welcome to Hogmanay 2020. Coming up on tonight's show, we've got music from Scotland's finest, Deacon Blue, Amy MacDonald, and Blazing Fiddles. We'll be celebrating Hogmanay Hollywood style with Karen Gillan. Talk succession with Brian Cox. Catching up with Call the Midwife's Laura Main. Yes, sir, I will boogie with Scotland football hero David Marshall. And don't miss our spectacular midnight moment with fireworks and a special performance from the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra. So let's begin the countdown as it's Hogmanay 2020. What a party we've got for you tonight. And you can't have a celebration without any people, so as well as you guys at home, we've also got our virtual audience beaming into the studio from across the country. Give us a wave, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're amazing. It makes me feel so powerful, I better stop now. Well, our virtual audience have got their drinks and nibbles ready. Hope you've got some at home too. So let's get this party started with the brilliant Deacon Blue. North 
Deacon Blue, what a great way to start the night. Well, here we are. It's Hogmanay, and normally at this time of year, we all have those chats, you know, are you a going out person or a staying in person? Well, tonight, we're all staying in people. Yeah. And it's a good thing, too, because we've got a very special night lined up for you. We've got lots more music, guests are plenty, and we might even have a wee firework or two. Now, I love this time of year because it involves two of my favourite things, singing and keeping a firm eye on the time. I like fun, but it's got to be to a schedule. And I know celebrations are a bit different this year, but just because we're in the middle of a pandemic doesn't mean we can't still sing Auld Lang Syne. Although we might have to change the words to, should old acquaintance be at least two metres away? I mean, who knew that 2020 would be the year the bins went out more than we did and we spent more on toilet roll than we did on holidays? Everyone's been doing a lot more staying in, Unless, of course, you're a delivery driver, in which case, sit down. You could probably do with a rest. <laughs> I've seen my delivery driver so much this year, he's replaced my parents as the emergency contact on my phone. <laughs> Alan, if you're watching this, I'll see you on Saturday. I'll leave the gate open. I never thought I'd say this, as I hate human contact. But there is one thing I've really missed this year, and that's hugging. So as soon as all this is over, you better watch out if you get anywhere near me. I'll be wrapped around your waist like a novelty belt. <laughs> One thing we won't miss tonight is midnight. So let's find out what's happening when we count down to the bells. I'm here at Edinburgh Castle and although there's not the usual street party happening below us, we will still have some of those traditional Hogmanay moments. And here with me up on the castle ramparts is our lone piper, senior pipe major Peter McGregor, who's going to take us all the way up to that countdown from across the country and the firing of the midnight gun, of course. At which point the skies above the Wallace Monument in Stirling will light up with an incredible fireworks display all set to the epic soundtrack of the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra. So there is not long to go until midnight. Make sure you go and get those glasses refilled. I think everyone would agree that this year, more than any, TV and film have played a crucial part in keeping us entertained throughout lockdown. So it gives me great pleasure to chat to two of Scotland's biggest actors, and I mean globally, not just in terms of height in comparison to me. You get my meaning. From across the Atlantic, Brian Cox and Karen Gillan, welcome to both of you. Yeah. Hello, darlings. Oh, it's so lovely Hello. to see you. Um, Karen, Doctor Who, Jumanji, Marvel. I mean, Marvel, for a start, is the biggest movie franchise, I think, that's ever existed. It must be an incredible thing to be part of that. It's mental. Even hearing you say that, it's like, what? Like, uh, Endgame, which was the second of the Avengers two-parter, like, was the biggest film of all time. Don't know if that includes inflation, but we won't talk about that. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's completely mind-blowing because I guess when you're filming it, you're like, oh yeah, this is like what I do every day. And then it sort of comes out and has this wild impact that it's just, it's so crazy. It's, it's, it's weird to comprehend, but like, uh, I'm really honoured to be involved in something that people are so passionate about. It was incredible. Brian just won a Golden Globe for Succession. Which is a huge accolade, isn't it? I love that show. You're so amazing in it, Brian. I just had to get that Thank out. you, Karen. Thank you. And I saw a clip of you accepting the award, Brian. You're very wonderful and laid back. But come on, you won a Golden Globe, Brian. It's, uh, yeah, it's something. I mean, I'm, I've always been ambiguous about awards. You know, I've, I, except when you get one and then you go weak at the knees. <laughs> you, know? you, know, you, you say, oh, well, I don't know about awards. I mean, I, I find, you know, it's, uh, it's the work that's important, the work. Oh, I've got a golden globe. Oh, thank you. So thank you very much. <laughs> Where'd you keep your golden globe, Brian? Uh, it's on the fireplace. Nice. Over there. Nice place for an award. If I had a golden globe, it, it would literally be here behind me. Right <laughs> yes. <now. laughs> well, the show. You <laughs> Do you know, it's so lovely, because, Karen, you've won tons of awards. Um, I just, before... Not I, as exciting well, as that. But... No, thanks for asking. I keep my pointless trophy I won with Giles Brandreth on the sideboard. So, Brian, I'm not wanting to boast, <laughs> but, uh, you know... 
So for the 10 people who perhaps haven't seen Succession, it's a show that has just taken on some plaudits, but also popular success. Is there going to be more Succession next year? We've just started filming again. And uh, we'll go through until July, I think. Yeah. And we've got some really interesting, which I can't tell you because I'd have to kill you. Uh, Please, we've don't. got interesting <laughs> plot trunks, really, which is going to be, it's going to shake people up. One thing I wanted to ask you about, Karen, specifically, we have something in common. I shaved my head at university, not for the reasons you did. You shaved your head for a really amazing job. I did mine because... I was going through a difficult time. <laughs> <laughs> I found it very freeing to shave my head. Yeah. How did you feel? Because you had to shave it for the character, didn't you? Yeah, so I had to shave it for the Nebula role and I was really excited to do it because I'd always had this really long hair, red hair. So I was like, it's kind of cool to like rid yourself of that defining feature in a way which lasted for about two weeks. And then I was just like really tall and bald and people were calling me sir all the time from, from behind. <laughs> so uh, it, was, it was fine for a while, but I'm glad to have hair now. Yes. One of the things that you've done in a lot of the films is you, if I may say, kick ass. A lot of action. Yeah, it, it's like being a kid again. And they're like, OK, you're going to do this cool fight sequence and we're going to make you look a lot better than you are at it. And I'm like... Because I, genuinely, I started off looking like spaghetti in fight sequences. It was like, I'm so tall, there's limbs flying around, <laughs> couldn't control them. And then, like, over the course of the movie, I was like, oh, I think I'm starting to get this a little bit. And now I feel like I could legitimately at least throw a punch, not that I've tested it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you've done quite a lot of action movies as well. Do you enjoy yeah. that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, it's horses for courses, you know. I, I, I love it all. So, I mean, yeah, that kind of, I played Stryker in the, the X-Men 2, which is I believe is the best X-Men, but then I'm biased. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I, I, no, it's great fun. It's, it's really great fun, and it's, it's real fantasy time, you know. It's, uh, and then you, you, know, you, and you top it up with the other stuff you do as well. You know? I'm going to ask you some quick-fire Hogmanay questions, OK? Brian, best party snack? Best party snack? Cheese and biscuits. Cheese and biscuits. <laughs> oh, Porsche house at Brian's. Um, Karen, <laughs> pyjamas or glad rags? Because we've, you know, been in our pyjamas for too long, I'm going to say glad rags. Glad rags, absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm wearing proper trousers for the first time in nine months. It feels really odd. I'm usually in my pyjamas yeah. at this point. Um, I'm in my pyjama bottoms right now. You just can't see it. Oh, God, I love that, Karen. <laughs> Business up the top, party down below. Love it. Yeah. Um, thank you to both of you for joining me. Brian and Karen, happy Hogmanay to you both and have a fantastic 2021. Please give it up for the wonderful Brian Cox and Karen Gillan! Yeah. Thank, you. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Well, it wouldn't be Hogmanay without hearing a fiddle or two, and tonight we've gone all out as we've got four of the best fiddlers in the land to get you dancing around your living room here with Double Rise, it's Blazing Fiddles! <laughs>
with Hannah Rarity for Auld Lang Syne just after the bells. Now, I'm now in music heaven as I've been joined by some of the most talented musicians in the land. Between them, my next guests have sold more records than I've seen cat videos, and I've seen a lot of cat <laughs> videos. It's Amy MacDonald and Deacon Blues, Lorraine McIntosh and Ricky Ross, everybody! <laughs> Hi. Oh, you all look so lovely. Hogmanay, Lorraine, mm -hmm. Ricky, you're singers, you're talented. Is it all about the singing on Hogmanay for you? Well, we... Hogmanay tends to be a time of year when we've finished a tour, mm -hmm. so we're kind of desperate to get away on our own. And we've had a few lovely, very, very quiet Hogmanays. Yeah, we had... Remember? Yeah, we have had a few quiet ones. And then one year we had an impromptu party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I... I had great fun sort of basically DJing at it. I, I, I can't dance and I won't dance, but I, I did make up a great playlist. Can't it? dance, won't dance? Well, just a lot. He can't? <laughs> <laughs> Look at what no, I can't dance. He, he knows just, he, he can't. can't. What's it like round at yours in Hogmanay, Amy? Um, mad. I am known for having planned parties, not impromptu. I'm always the one that has to have the party, so mm -hmm. my neighbours absolutely hate me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is it a good party? <clears throat> Do I get a cocktail bar in and the cocktail waiter in to oh, hand good. everyone drinks? So. Oh, my God. I've got a bottle of baby sham. Help yourself. <laughs> Most of us were kind of in our PJs watching Cagney and Lacey during lockdown. <laughs> well, I mean, I was. You were writing new music, though, weren't you? We use our time <laughs> fruitfully. Mm -hmm. uh, working in Gregor's studio, which is up in Dundee, and my studio, which is in Glasgow. And between us, we managed to sort of get everyone sort of in isolation enough to record some things. <clears throat> and it's coming out in February, is, a, is a, the long story short. In order to write and to create, you just had to improvise, didn't you, Amy? Mm. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, I put an album out in the midst of everything and it has just been weird, like you do mm. interviews over laptop screens and, and all of that, but you just, you you get used to it quite mm. quickly. Um, so in lockdown, we all went for walks. You used to go for lots of, I used to go for lots of walks. And I would see Lorraine and Ricky, because we live quite close to each other, I would see Lorraine raking the gravel on your drive. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a beautiful so cool. thing. Because <laughs> you're the cocktail waitress. <laughs> and she was the raking the gravel on her drive. <laughs> but one of the things I think that was lovely was Gardening became quite important. Did you enjoy Actually, your garden? Susan, I don't know if you noticed, it wasn't my drive, it was the street we live on that I was weeding. I moved out of my garden and into the outside world. I started weeding public streets. Well. And I think, you know, we've got to do something. Do you know how I know that, Lorraine? Because I was at my bay window going, what's she doing? <laughs> In terms of recording music, you started very young. Do you still get that same buzz when you perform? Um, I get a lot more nervous now. When I started out, I think I just wasn't very professional, so I was just like, oh, fit as it is. <laughs> Who cares if it sounds rubbish? Yeah. <laughs> and then now you go, oh, no, this needs to be yeah. good. So you, I, I mean, me personally, I overanalyse everything mm -hmm. and just think about everything that most people wouldn't even notice, but it drives you crazy. Absolutely. Yeah, that's very real. Yes. Very real. But Deacon Blue's music is the soundtrack to people's lives. Yeah, so we've got the advantage that occasionally, and Amy will have this with certain songs now that, because she's been around for a few years now at least, <laughs> that if you forget things, you've usually got an audience just to kind of keep you right. I have a tendency <laughs> to let my mind wander sometimes and start thinking about what catering I'm going to have after the <laughs> show. <laughs> and then I go, what bit of the song am I at? <laughs> Is it the chorus? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Oh, so that. That's so good to know. What I enjoy about Amy McDonald that I never knew is very catering focus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Isn't she? Yes. Very catering focus. And next time I see you perform, when you're doing like something really wistful, I'll be like, she's thinking about sausage rolls. Oh, that's what she's thinking about. <laughs> um, I've got an absolute treat because joining us now is Scotland's football hero. Please welcome David Marshall. Welcome. Um, it's such a treat to see you because Scotland's men's national team are going to their first major tournament for 22 years. Woo! You and the team did brilliantly. How did that feel, knowing you were going to go to a major tournament for the first time in decades? It was incredible, um, the emotion at the time. And I think maybe the best word to sum it up would be relief. It was it was such a long time, um, and the players were aware how long it had been and how much it meant to everyone. So, um, just such a joyous occasion. So, if you didn't watch it at home, it went to penalties. 
Now, David, as the goalkeeper, how does that feel? The, the pressure's more on the taker. Um, I'd rather try and save five penalties than stand up there and just take one, um, to be completely honest. When it got to the fifth penalty, um, obviously they'd scored four. I was then getting a bit nervous, thinking, ah, time to turn up here, it's time to, time to save a penalty. And um, I think if you're ever going to win a game of football or get to a major tournament, the way we'd done it that night was, was the way to do it. I love the understated nature. I thought, now's the time to turn up, David. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch it, Amy? I did watch it, yeah. Um, I don't even like watching penalties when I don't mm. care who wins. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh. I did swither a bit and think, should I turn this off? But I stuck to my guns and I thought, no, you just need to deal with the pressure. And I You know that, that way sometimes you think you might be the jinx, though. I was thinking, maybe I should switch <laughs> off. You were too busy watching what Lorraine was doing out your window. <laughs> Amy, you make it sound sinister. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch it? Well, I find watching Scotland almost too painful. I cannot cope with the pressure, but I was in for that amazing moment and the speeches after it and, you know, the interviews mm -hmm. after it. The only other time I've experienced anything like this was when Andy Murray won Wimbledon. Mm. I heard it in the streets mm -hmm. around Glasgow and I'm sure around Scotland, and it was exactly the same. You could hear when it happened. Mm -hmm. It was astonishing. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be back with you in a second, David. Amy, I have to let you go now, because you've okay. got to pop off and perform for us. So I'll let you Great. go and set Thank up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before I let you go, David, you're going to the Euros, Scotland's men's team. Yeah. I mean, there is no pressure from an entire nation, but are you feeling confident, <laughs> David? Yeah, definitely. It's um, Obviously, it's, we've achieved something that's taken so long. It's a fantastic young group coming through. Uh, myself excluded, age-wise, obviously. Um, <laughs> but there's some big, big players, uh, big, big teams, so there's no reason we can't go, to, go there and do well. Wow. David, from everyone, thank you very much for what you did <laughs> this year no to save 2020. Uh, good luck for the Euros next year, David, to you and all of the team, and Ricky and Lorraine. You'll be performing some more tracks for us later on, won't you? Yes. Absolutely lovely. Well, I think Amy's now set, so performing her huge hit, This Is The Life. It's Amy MacDonald. <laughs> Sing 
singing the songs, thinking this is a life. And you wake up in the morning and your head first twice the size. Where you gonna go? Where you gonna go? Where you gonna sleep tonight? Donald and we'll be hearing more from Amy a little bit later. Now midnight is fast approaching and just before we welcome the bells let's take a moment to reflect on what's been a difficult time for many as we join our lone piper on the ramparts of Edinburgh Castle. Stand by as we count down to 2021 in 30 seconds.
Now, in true tradition, it's time for the song of friendship. So please welcome Hannah Rarity as she joins Blazing Fiddles for Auld Lang Syne. Absolutely beautiful. Now, our next song from Deacon Blue can only be described as iconic, so get the coffee table out the way, grab your nearest hairbrush or bottle of baby sham and sing at the top of your voice, if only to drown out the sound of me singing along to the incredible Deacon Blue with dignity. <laughs> Up our street, he's a worker for the council. Has been 20 years, and he takes no shit off nobody. A litter of the gut, packs it in a bag, and never thinks to mutter. And he packs his lunch in the sun blessed back. The children call him bogey. He never lets on, but I know because he once told me he let me know a secret about the money in his kit. He's gonna buy a dinghy, gonna call her Dignity. And I see her at the West Coast, 
to village in town. I'll be on my holidays, they'll be doing the rounds. They'll ask me how I got it. I say, I save my money. Say, isn't she pretty? That ship called just been granted to all of us for 2021 there's Luke I've just been joined by a tall dark ish haired gentleman bearing some black bun it's the great British Bake Off champion Peter Sawkins everybody happy Peter happy new year thank you for the black bun drinks put it down because it looks I'll be honest quite heavy um Peter the question most people have asked me to ask you when they found out I was going to meet you was you obviously knew you'd won Mm. How did you keep that secret? I think uh, it was it was just fun to watch it alongside other, alongside everyone else, mm -hmm. and uh, people got nervous when I didn't do so well. People were excited when I had a good week, mm -hmm. um, so it kept it fun uh, by just keeping everyone in the dark. Did you tell anyone? Very few people. My mum, my dad, my old flatmates, um, but not even. I've got two new flatmates this year. Was watching it all the way through with them. They had no you idea tell. what I did. Oh my God, it must be like that program, The Mass Singer. I've always, I've always wanted to be on The Mass Singer and like not even tell my wife and be going, oh, they're great, aren't they? I wonder who they are. And then I'll be unveiled and be like, it was me. I was the toadstool the whole time. Anyway, is it very different in the tent? I got like two hours sleep max the night before the first mm -hmm. challenge, but then you kind of ease into it. Everyone just has a good time in the tent. So you're kind of baking with your pals after a little bit of time. You got a Paul Hollywood handshake. Tell me. What's it like? Is it limp? Is it firm? Tell me. I'd say it's a high quality handshake, yeah. Was it f firm? I respect the handshake. I respect the man, yeah. Was it dry? Um because there's nothing worse than a slightly damp handshake. Um I was I, I was, was probably say, I was Peter's like, I don't know what to say to this question. 
I was probably more nervous, so I'm, I'm worried that I might have had a slightly... Damp handshake. Damp, damp, <laughs> damp handshake. <laughs> um, Peter, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful 2021. And well done again for winning the Great British Bake Off. It's Peter, everybody. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> now it's time to welcome back Amy MacDonald. Here she is with a track from her latest album, Fire. You lit a candle in my heart You said it'd never fade away A little flicker at the start Now a full-blown flame Every time I cry, every time I laugh Always by my side through the good times or bad Never thought that I would be the kind of girl Give it all away There was so much left to say This little candle burns away Every time I smile star of Scott's Squad, Grado, and I thought I'd call the midwife, not to deliver any babies. We were really not set up for that here, and we certainly don't have the insurance. But to wish her a happy year, it's call the midwife's Laura Main. Please welcome both of them. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Laura. I mean, Hello. you look amazing. And what a <laughs> kitchen. Hey, Grado, look oh, at that kitchen. Thank you. Is that new fruit? <laughs> Is that new fruit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bowl of changers. <laughs> it's a bowl of got changers. Go, go and eat one. I don't believe you. That's for, that's <laughs> no, for don't sure. Don't make her eat a tangerine. She's got her makeup <laughs> perfect, Grado. <laughs> Laura, call the midwife. Absolutely huge. For the very few people who haven't seen it, tell me about your character. There's a lot of emotion. 
Yes, I've been in it from the beginning. I was Sister Bernadette and I was a nun, um, but I'm now married to the doctor. So um, it's been quite a journey, but it's... That's quite uh, a journey, Laura. That's quite a it journey. Is. Yes. It is. <laughs> um, and um, I don't think anyone will recognise me with a bit of glamorous makeup and not my specs. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, just love being a part of it. Equally loved Scott Squad. Do you see a Call the Midwife Scott Squad crossover, Grado? <laughs> well, the Polish usually put people away, don't mm -hmm. they? They do, Midwives yeah, usually, yeah. Pull people out. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, I mean, if basically, my character, Hugh McCurdy, is basically me with a traffic cop uniform. Mm -hmm. the, only, the only experience I've, I mean, I've never been to a birth, I've never experienced it. I mean, my father's golden retriever had pups last year, <laughs> and I was there for that. I took a couple of photos. <laughs> For Into the Sun, they went with Hero Grado, delivers Golden Receiver puppies. But it was it was really my niece's uh, boyfriend, Pete Dong, he kind of done it. I, I, I was in the paper for it. I mean, I took the Hero Grado, delivers it. But look, I mean, the thing is, Laura, you haven't actually ever delivered a baby in real life, I take it. I haven't, no. How many do you think you've probably, I don't know the answer, but how many do you think you've delivered on screen? Gosh, I don't know how many my character has delivered. I mean, it's probably double double figures now. I've watched a, a huge amount of Casualty in Grey's Anatomy, and if there was an, an emergency incident, I'd probably step in. <laughs> so if, for example, someone had a baby, you surely could go, I'll have a shot. Obviously, if there's a midwife there and if there's a mobile phone, I shall be calling on either and, and ringing my phone. But um, I'd certainly be able to... Encourage and Encourage. calm. Absolutely. Tell them to deep breathe, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But yes, don't push just yet. No, no, don't push. hold it in. Hold it in. <laughs> Absolutely. Behind you, Laura, I can see. Now, is that your strictly trophy that just happens to be in the background I mean, of the chat? It does. It does actually live there. Yeah. I probably could have moved it out of shot, but I just thought if we're struggling. For, for chat, you know, we can talk about our love of Strictly well, season because I thought you were fabulous I, in it. I would criticise you, but I answer the door with my Strictly glitter ball under my arm <laughs> just in case no one's noticed. Uh, I, I won mine on the tour and you won Congrats. the children need one with a jive. Yes. Now, this is very interesting because when you do Strictly, there's lots of different dances. The jive's a tough one, Laura. Your cardio has got to be pretty good, I think, to do it. Yeah. It's yeah. 90 seconds of, you know, a major hit class. Yeah. I'd love to do it. Would you? Mm-hmm. Aye. Right. Do you think you would be better at ballroom or Latin, Grado? The only thing I can do is with dancing is it's got... You know the, the box step? Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you kind of box... Obviously, you kind of box step. You know, that's the only one I know. That's only the box step's the only thing I know. I think you'd be good at ballroom, Grado. Think so? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think you've got the, the carriage of a man... So. ..who could hold a woman passionately, yet... Right. ..firmly. You put in a good word for me? <laughs> sure, I mean, they don't listen to me. <laughs> uh, two doors down, what's it like being part of such an amazing show? I love it, honestly. It was like, I remember my pal a couple of years ago saying, you need to watch this thing called Two Doors Down. I'd never seen the first series, and I binge watched the first two, and I absolutely adored mm. it, I loved it. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was wrestling in Florida, and I got a, an email for, to go for an audition to play a part, and I was I literally was... Greeting. I was that happy because it's just such an amazing programme. I love it. My dream for 2021 is to start a story. I was wrestling in Florida. That's really all I want <laughs> in my life. Uh, Laura, you and your amazing fruit ball and your tangerines and your glitter ball <laughs> have a lovely yeah. 2021, my darling. You too. Grado, have Happy a fantastic New year. year. Happy New Year to both of you. Thank you for Happy joining New me. Year. Grado and Laura Main, everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I think it's time we had some more music, so let's give a huge but well sanitised hand for Blazing Fiddles.
was wonderful. Well, I can't believe it. We've nearly run out of time. Thanks to everyone for joining us tonight. Karen Gillan, Brian Cox, Laura Main, David Marshall, and of course, my studio chums, Grado and Peter Sawkins. Thanks for the brilliant music from Deacon Blue, Amy MacDonald and Blazing Fiddles. Thanks to my virtual audience. And most of all, thanks to you at home for keeping me company. Otherwise, I'd have been on my own tonight. I hope you all have a very happy and healthy 2021. Before we go, we just had to finish the show with none other than Deacon Blue performing Queen of the New Year. Good night. <laughs> Difficulty.